And now, John, I'm going to do this in little clips. Um, not sure how well this is going to come out because I couldn't get my camera to work because the battery's flat and I can't find the charger. So this is just regular coax. See? Regular coax. We need 3.5 metres. Very roughly. slipping out of my hand. Well, 0.5 metres is there. Now I've got to go and find them. Me cutters, I forgot where I put them. Be back in a minute. Now we find the midway point. I still can't find my little sharp knife. Just by grabbing the end there, two ends together. Here's the midway point there. What I'm going to do. There's the middle. I'm going to use this to pair the outside here on either side. Then I'll remove that bit of outer insulation, but I'll leave the braid there and I'll separate it in the middle. Let me just redo this. Righto, John. So I've got the insulation off now. Now, what I do is I separate whoops separate the braid there in the middle and I'll bring it back and I'll just make two tails out of it so what I've done here separated it there and I just pick the braid like so Trying to save file size, which is why I keep stopping it. Okay, just like so, and I'll just twist him up. And I'll do the same thing on that end. Now here's a little wooden beer coaster. I'll drill some holes in it, one to suspend it with, actually I probably won't because I'm just going to put a vertical, so we'll just have a couple which I'll put um, cable ties around to, for cable relief, a couple there, probably two at each end here, and uh, one for where the coax will come through, and uh, you'll see in a minute what I'm going to do then. Now this will be the middle of the antenna which is that bit of coax which I've butchered here earlier on. So what we're going to do now is just put some cable ties through here and through there and tighten it up. So all those cable ties here are doing is preventing cable relief so that you can't pull and put pressure on the these when I solder the coax onto there and there. Now I'll prepare the coax. Now I'll prepare the coax soldering onto the antenna wherever I put it. Old age is a bugger. Just by simply bearing the braid.
picking the braid apart. Doing now. You need a very fine pick for doing this, otherwise you end up damaging too much of the braid. Okay. Pull that back there. And then that will be soldered onto there. And I'll bear that back and I'll solder it onto there. And uh, it's about 80% of the antenna done. So there we've got the two tail solder that the centre goes onto, doesn't matter, either the braid or the centre. The braid goes onto the other half. There's half the antenna going that way, half the antenna going that way. So what I could do down this end, I bear that and I short it out. Sorry, I bear that and I short the two ends out and I'll add a length of 0.9 of a metre. 900 uh, sims on the end of that the same on the other end antenna done then I'll hoist it up and put a plug on the end of the lead and Bob's your uncle back in a minute I right, know see I've bared that copper back on the outside bared the centre just twist him together here when I make up my next little piece, my point nine stub, it'll just get soldered on there and go out for point nine of a metre. That's on each end. So here's me two lengths of uh, this is speaker wire. You can use 300 ohm ribbon, whatever. And it's point nine of a metre each. Point nine, point nine. What I do here is I pair it back. Take the insulation off at both ends, twist it together, solder it up, twist it together, solder it up, and solder it onto the, each one of those will go onto the, like this one will go on one end of the antenna and the other one will go on the other end. Antenna's finished then. Just uh, put it up in the air and start checking SWR, which I'll show you soon. So here's one of the stubs. See, it's 0.9 of a metre, and I've got it twisted together at each end. This is one end of the antenna. <sighs> I haven't got the right tools to do on this, but anyway. We just twist that there. Put that on my knee. Far from an ideal way of doing this. Solder away. <sighs> A bit close to the family jewels here. This iron is not hot enough, nor has it got a big enough tip on it, so it's a bit of a rough job. But it'll do, because this is basically only for demonstration purposes, uh, John, because I won't be putting it up permanently. I don't think anyway. Yeah, you can wrap that up with insulation if you want to. 
and also if you want to probably advisable see elastic that center of the antenna up as well I'm not going to bother so let me go and uh, do the rest of this and uh, I'll just do the other end no point showing you again Now this is far from ideal John but I've just tied, that's one end of the antenna, I've just tied a bit of fishing line, I'm just going to pull it straight up in the tree like that. It's only temporary so that should work and uh, just to show you the entire antenna, okay so that's one complete end, that's the end of the stub, should really tape that up but I'm not going to bother. Actually, I might. It looks a bit shoddy there. It's only shit coax. And then there's the center of the antenna. My great insulator made out of wood. And then here's the other end of the antenna. And then the feed line goes out there. And up there is the antenna with the feed line wrapped around it, though. And it just goes down a bit of fishing line. And that's it. I'll just do the ends now and then I'll get the uh, antenna analyzer out which is just a fancy SWR meter and uh, test it. Now remember I was saying John about double bazooka is a really broad band. This one I've built for 28 megahertz. So if you were to build it, you would need to make the stubs just a little bit longer. Um, maybe four inches longer. So instead of 0.9 of a metre, you would go to maybe a metre. But have a look at this. Now, that's 10 to 1. Whoops. This is backwards, but that's 10 to 1 SWR. That's 3 to 1. That's one point, where it is there is about 1.6, but that's 29 megs. Let me just reset. We'll go to 26, 500 will do. Flat line at one point. It's showing up at 1.7. Okay, so that's at 26,500. We'll go to 27,205 with it, which is channel 20. Now this is a span of 40 kilohertz on this. still at, I don't know if you can see that, but it's still at, oh it's dropped down actually, it's about 1.3 and a rising to about 1.4. There's 1.5 above it. So let's keep going. We'll go to 28,500. One point two to one and dropping just below that. So we'll go to oops five. I don't know what it's gonna do here. That's actually over a span of five hundred megahertz. It's not kilohertz, megahertz on that, which surprises me. I made a blue, I punched the wrong things in. So let's go back to um, 0, 0, 29 megahertz. 
So remember we started off at about 1.7 or 26 and a half. We're now at 29. Come on. Here we go. Oh, this span's a bit widened. Whoops. Let me stop this right yeah. So 29 megahertz, rising up to, that's 29 right in the, 29 right in the middle there. So that's about 28, 600, that's 29, 400. So see it's only just starting to rise to, even then it's only 1.6. So it's tremendously broadbanded. <coughs> <coughs> we'll pick a frequency twenty-seven four oh five, and I'm going to look at the exact SWR at twenty-seven four oh five. One point four two. Sorry, one point. Reading it. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, there you go. 1.2. 1.2. 1 there you go. That's on channel 40. Now I'm going to package these all off and send them to you. Hope they help.